Hi, I'm Sabrina Whitehorse, and you are watching Taken TV. We love this program because we get to interview amazing people that are making a difference on our planet, for our people, working with God. And I have Frank here today. Frank, it is so nice to see you. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing, who you're working for, which we all know who that really is, right? That's right. Um, tell us a little bit about why you're doing what you're doing and yeah. who you're working for. Sure. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I really appreciate this opportunity. So I'm with America's Christian Credit Union, and we do banking. And we've been around for 66 years, though unfortunately a lot of people, when I meet them, it's the first time they're even hearing about it. So we're wanting more people to understand that they have options for where they bank. And something that, I, you know, I think people don't, they don't, maybe connect the dots on this, but there is over $17 trillion sitting in FDIC insured banks, in checking accounts and savings accounts, over $17 trillion. And those banks are allowed by law to lend out up to 90% of that money. So then the question is, who are they lending it to? Right. right. If you're at one of these big national banks, one of these top 10 banks, they're lending that money out to people that may not share your values and may even be working against what's important to you and what's important to the ministry that you're doing and you know the things that God teaches us in scripture. And so we wanna encourage people, think about what the money in your checking account is doing when you're not using it. And when you're with a credit union like ours, a faith-based credit union, we've done over a thousand adoption, I'm sorry, no, we've done over 2,000 adoption loans. We've done over a thousand church loans. So we are extending credit to believers so that they can grow their ministry, grow their impact in the community to do God's work. Well, so everything that you said is absolutely God's work, right? Mm. So you're extending credit to people to do God's work, and you, in turn, are doing God's work, as you very well mm -hmm. know. And I think that we're living in times right now that are very, um, there's a lot of lies going on. And so I think that, uh, you know, Taken TV mm. wants to always interview people that are exposing the truth. Mm and helping people to expose the truth. Broadcasting is what we do, and this is the medium in which we work in. How can you express to our audience a way that somebody can get involved with your organization? With your, yeah. is, it, is it considered a bank or a credit union? Well, it's, a, it's a credit union, but it's a, it's a financial institution a lot like a bank. And the really simple thing to do would be to simply switch your banking. And I, I don't want to sound too promotional here, but it's, there, it's a fact. You need a bank, right? You need a checking account. You need a debit card if you're going to make purchases in our current economy. Uh, it's, it's awfully hard to get away from this increasing cashless society where we use our cards. But then the question is, who are you going to for that card? Are they sympathetic to your views? Because I, I can tell you, this year alone, we've had over 20 Christian ministries come to us who had been debanked. So their financial institution sent them a letter and a cashier's check with all of their deposits and said, you are no longer a customer. And they don't That's tell them why. That's to people that I know, actually. Okay, so you yeah. know this better than anybody. Yes. They don't tell you why. They just say, you are no longer a customer. Good luck. And mm -hmm. so if you are trying to do God's work, then you're going to be increasingly at odds with the world. We know this. Jesus promised this, right? And so when we are doing God's work and we are increasingly at odds with the world, it means that the world's institutions are going to paint us as extremist, as crazy, as dangerous. And they're going to say, we don't want you to have continued access to your banking. And so when you make that switch, especially when you do it proactively, you do it before you get kicked out, you have the control over that situation rather than waiting and scrambling and trying to figure it out. You know, if you're, if you're an organization and you have payroll to make and you lose your bank account, three days before payroll goes out, what's going to happen to your employees? You have an obligation to them to make and sure they get really paid. it really does happen just from one day to the next because I do know somebody that was with a very big bank and from one day to the next, they had no access to their monies. So what's going to happen now if you have, like you said, payroll to make and things like that? So what you're doing is, is not only a godly mission, but it's also imperative for people to know more about it because of what's happening in the world today, especially in the banking system, That's right? That's right? right? But let me ask you something. You talked about all these trillions of dollars, mm. right? Is there any way for people to access that that are doing good? In other words, if somebody has a cause and they might not be some giant organization, is there any way for somebody in our audience to be able to access any of that sort of funding through your organization? Absolutely, yeah. And like I said, you know, we've done over a thousand church loans. So, for instance, if someone out there is the pastor of a church and maybe, you know, 
I, Jensen Franklin was here last night and he was talking about how when he spoke the truth, his congregation increased. And I think a lot of churches through COVID saw that, that when they continued to, to preach the truth, preach God's word, they saw their ministries grow and more people seeking that truth. And so maybe your church is growing and you've outgrown the space that you're in and you want to buy a new facility or you want to expand your, your sanctuary. A lot of commercial lenders out there, again, they don't share the values of a church and they look at that and they'd say, I don't, I don't get it. Like people show up on Sunday, they put money in a little basket and you're going to use that money to pay us back on this loan. No, thank you. That that's weird and risky for us. And we don't want to, we don't want to touch that. I would love for us to get to a point in our, our ascension where when you think about the monies that we make, you pay taxes on it. Yeah. And then you pay tax on the, the monies that you earn. And then when you buy something, you pay tax on whatever it is that you buy. Mm -hmm. And then you pay taxes on this and you pay taxes on that. And yeah. it's just, it's it, it's this constant taking. Yes. And, and I would love to be able to see how we can give back to the people. Mm. Um, and I think that that's going to be the way that God wants us to really start to walk more and more. So yeah. it could be a possibility to have some certain kind of programs where we can assist people mm. that are actually making a difference, yeah. right? And I know a lot of ministries obviously are making a huge difference. But if somebody doesn't have a ministry, is there any way that, that somebody can actually benefit with your organization? Are there any kind of loans that you give for people that are doing good that yeah. might not be a pastor? Sure. Yeah. We serve Christian-owned businesses. So if you have a business or a non-church ministry or non-profit, we can serve your organizational banking needs, but we also serve personal banking needs. And so just individuals and families out there who, again, they're saying, I want something better. I want to not only get a great return on my deposits and have access to low interest loans, but also know that my money is doing really good kingdom work when I'm not using it. They can come on over and, and our website, it's americaschristiancu.com. And again, I don't want to sound too promotional here, but I really want people to think about where you bank and recognizing how important that is. And there are other faith-based financial institutions out there. We're not the only game in town, but I would say take a hard look at your finances and it's, it's a little bit inconvenient. You know, people, they say, well, you know, I have all these automatic subscription payments and the electric company and my phone bill and I'm going to have to change all that over. Yes, you will. Unfortunately, doing the right thing often involves a little bit of effort, but the nice thing is, once you make that switch, once you move all those transactions over to your account with a faith-based financial institution like America's Christian Credit Union, then it's done. Right. And you can go back to the, the business of living and you can trust that it'll work and you can know that you have a clean conscience because your money is not going to fund causes that are contrary to scripture, contrary to God's word. And that is so vital. And I think that's one of the reasons why we love having people like you and your organization and what it is that you're doing. You've been around for 66 years. This is something that is a solid place for people to put their money. And like you said, it's organizations that are doing not such good things with our money. And you said to the tune of trillions of dollars, which I'm sure a lot of us don't even know that the, the amount of, of monies is so high. Trillions of dollars. That's a lot of money, right. folks. Um, so anyways, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Sabrina. And for uh, sharing this wisdom with us. I appreciate it. Thank it's you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure, Frank. You take care. And for well, those you. of you listening, many blessings to you. My name is Sabrina Whitehorse, and you are watching Taken TV. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.